Hi everyone, Climthony Walls Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Glass Beach album, Plastic Death. This is the second full-length LP from Glass Beach, a West Coast indie band that had a breakout moment in 2019 on Run For Cover Records with the first Glass Beach album, which was aptly titled the first Glass Beach album. The record had its shortcomings, as some debuts from young up-and-coming bands tend to have, but the versatility and ambition showcased across the track list on this thing uh, was still something to behold. Definitely not what you'd expect from a group that had only been around for several years at that point, and yet this record contained these epic indie rock opuses that brought together bits of art rock and prog rock, math rock, emo, psychedelic, and electronic music too. And now band mastermind Jay McClendon, aka Classic Jay, about five years later is now expanding the band's genre palette even further on on this new record with a little metal, some jazz rock chord changes. The whole thing is leaning a bit further into the worlds of art rock and prog rock too, with all these winding multi-phase songs that will either blow you away or maybe leave you cold depending on how much pop sensibility you need in your music generally. This record will most likely challenge most people's needs for consistency across an album too. We may not be talking Mr. Bungle or Ween levels of absurd genre clashes, but but there's still definitely a lot going on between the 13 tracks here, like the mesmerizing piano-backed indie balladry that kicks off the opener, which kind of sounds like an early Grizzly Bear song, especially with the vocal harmonies, which all builds up with much punchier rock drums and these mathy repeating guitar licks layered up with some pretty flashy synth work. It's spellbinding, but also technical in a way that'll most likely catch the ear of a jazz rock fan. And it goes on from here, coasting past six minutes. It's pretty long for an intro and picks up the pace in the final leg, uh, building up with this epic, explosive, post-hardcore crescendo. As impressed as I am with some aspects of this song, I will say I'm not as sold on the vocals or the tune of it, as I just don't think it's that sharp, and the moaned inflections, uh, especially throughout the second half of the song, just aren't really all that flattering. Now, by comparison, the following song, Motions, is a lot punchier from a song structure standpoint. It's like if you could take some slick fusion leads, play them out over dry indie rock riffs, and then have that eventually slide into these uh, sleek and dramatic chord changes that feel lifted straight out of Radioheads and Rainbows, especially when those horn parts start firing off toward the end. This era of Radiohead seems like a pretty key influence on this album, especially during tracks like Whalefall. And I will give it to Glass Beach. A lot of these reference points come together more cohesively than you might expect, but on occasion the production is a little on the dry side, and they're just continuing continues to be this gap between how impressive a lot of the composition work is and how lacking the singing is at times. Even with it getting as fiery and aggressive as it does uh, during those horn portions on motions. But there are other portions of the record too where the singing isn't quite meeting the moment in terms of cutting through the instrumental chaos, really commanding the spotlight, or giving the lyrics the enunciation and clarity and impact they should have, which does prevent some cuts on this thing from being as catchy as they could be, and it's particularly tragic when you're getting these vivid character portraits like in the case of the killer, or painfully relatable bars such as, I'm so sick of going through the motions, I want to be the new routine, and I want to kill the competition, and I want to run like a machine. I want to find another way out. The following slip under the door brings a very big Toby Driver KO Dot vibes with crushing metal riffs and throat shredding screams, a bookending these very eerie, atmospheric, groovy prog rock passages that frankly start to drag after a bit. Then Guitar Song presents a kind of interesting change up on the record. We have a lot of cute and plucky arpeggios that serve as the backbone of the whole thing, and they come across surprisingly sweet. I would actually say the song gets a little poppy with this set of R&B style chord changes on the hook. It's a rare and interesting combination of influences, which can't always be said about all the tracks here, like in the case of Rare Animal, which overall I think is 
fine. There's not a whole lot to report here outside of it. Just feels like some very this town needs guns esque math pop. Really pretty average for the style by every metric outside of the uh, uh, super aggressive and explosive finish. Going deeper into the track list though, I think Puppy is the first real moment on the LP where uh, the vocals actually smack with a high level of clarity lyrically. Plus you get these great plucky angular lead uh, melodies and guitar licks that actually stay playing in my head long after the song is over. And as preposterous as those screeching falsetto vocals toward the very end of the song are, uh, they're pretty bold and they stand out. Because sadly, again, there are just so many moments where those vocals fall short, and this is even more so the case toward the end of the album, frankly. Whether you're talking about the tender and despondent finish of the track 200, where this nasally disaffected, emo-influenced uh, vocal delivery I just don't think works all that well, just not in this context. And are there moments here where it does? On guitar song? Uh, sure, kinda, yeah. Does it work on the forlorn closer that uh, also gives us more Tom Yorkian rock passages in the second half? Uh, most definitely, yeah. But does it also work during all of the epic and heavy rock opera nods during the song Comatose, or how it's spelled, Comatose? Yeah, in, in my opinion, not as much. So ultimately with this record, I'm kind of torn. In some respects, it's like right up my alley because a lot of the playing is great, a lot of the instrumental ideas are epic and out there and over the top. The genre fusions and clashes throughout the record are intriguing and creative and unique. However, the singing and songwriting I'm not quite as impressed with. If anything, that's what I was kind of hoping would improve uh, between this and the last Glass Beach album. And as a result, I think it's kind of holding the band's potential back a bit. Cause yeah, this record, it just doesn't really feel like progress on all fronts really. And it's also worth noting that while this record does touch down on a lot of different sounds and vibes, it doesn't always put a super bold spin on them or improve on them greatly by any means. But yeah, while with this record, I was really seeing something in it when I first put it on, the more I spun it, the more I listened to it, the more I realized it wasn't really having that profound of an impact on me, the more I realized I wasn't getting as much out of it as I wanted, and as a result, even if there are aspects of it that I like a lot, I'm kind of feeling a, a light to decent six on this one. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Glass Beach, uh, forever.